you can. Yep. Okay, so thanks. Um, Charlotte, do you want to, no, sorry, Poppy, are you want to take us through the introductory slides? Hi, I'm going to do some quick housekeeping with you all. I'm going to apologise, I'm currently on my phone, so hopefully you can all hear me and you can see Charlotte's slides um, at my computer decided to give up this morning. Um, so it's a quick agenda. So for my bit, so we're going to do a bit of housekeeping, like keep yourself muted, etc. And then we're going to meet everyone who's on the call today and then kind of what the plan is for today's meeting. Okay, so I'm sure you're all used to Zoom by now, but just a quick reminder, please, can you all stay muted when you're in the main room? Um, you're welcome to keep your video on as it's really nice to see all of your faces. Um, but uh, be aware that this introduction presentation is being recorded. So if you don't want to be recorded, then stay muted and keep the video off and you won't be recorded. Um, so I've forgotten to update the slides about asking questions. We're actually gonna do it slightly differently to last time. So we're gonna use um, a tool called Slido. So one of my colleagues is hopefully gonna share the link in the chat in a minute for Slido. There we go, Graham, done it, thanks Graham. Um, so there's going to be a link where you can add your questions to that. Um, sorry, Charlotte, can you just give back a little bit? Thanks. Um, so yeah, and just a general reminder, please be respectful and kind to everyone when we're having the discussions. I know we're all probably um, very keen to discuss our thoughts on this, but just a reminder to include everyone in your group. And yes, I've said we're going to be recording, so Thanks, Charlotte. Next slide. Um, okay, so meet the team. So there's, as we said, a slight change around, but this is the core project team for the Net Zero project. Um, so we're all based within the Centre for Environmental Data Analysis, which is um, a group of people that sits across two councils. So we're based within the Science and Technology Facilities Council, but the work we do and the services we provide are pre predominantly on behalf of the Natural Environment Research Council. So that's your core project team with the pictures, but we've also got a few more helpers today as well, which we'll introduce later during the breakout sessions. Um, thanks, Charlotte. So aims of today, we wanna to engage all of you with the projects and kind of explain what we're all about and what we're hoping to do. We're also gonna explain how you can get involved and or potentially get funded from the project. And we're gonna try and gather some of your ideas about um, the activities that we're planning or the issues or opportunities we think we might face. Thanks Charlotte. Okay so next up we're going to have kind of a project overview from Martin and Charlotte then we're going to have a little bit of time for questions to clarify that we're all on the same page and understanding the project then we'll go to some breakout discussions which hopefully you've seen the topics that we're going to discuss and you have a bit of an idea all of the links for the documents that we'll be using will have been sent out in the email this morning. Um, and then we'll have a bit of a summary from the breakouts, all of us back in the same room, and then we'll do some final questions and next steps. Great, thanks very much, Charlotte. That's enough housekeeping for me. So I'm gonna hand over to Martin, um, our project lead, who's gonna give a bit of an introduction about the project. Okay, thanks, Poppy. Uh, as Poppy said, I'm leading this project uh, and if we go on to the next slide I'm just going to give a little overview of the ambition uh, say a few words about the UKRI digital research infrastructure which is a new cross-council program uh, talk about why the project is needed and, and our approach so the, the digital research infrastructure uh, as far as our project is concerned, refers to all UKRI-owned UKRI and majority-funded digital research infrastructure. Sorry, that's a little bit too brief and ambitious there. Uh, but just the digital research infrastructure that we're interested in. Net zero here refers to carbon dioxide emissions uh, and other greenhouse gases uh, associated with the procurement and operation and use of UKRI. DRI and measures taken to capture and offset unavoided emissions. Uh, we are a scoping project, so our role is to explore approaches and gather evidence rather than to implement changes. 
and we have um, 1.86 million pounds awarded for 17 months work so quite a, a generous budget um, next slide please so our ambition is um, to collect evidence to inform UKRI um, digital research infrastructure investment decisions, provide UKRI and their community with an outline roadmap for achieving carbon neutrality in their digital research infrastructure by 2040 or sooner. Um, I'll say a little bit more about that as well. Um, the community involvement is very important because we do believe that achieving net zero um, requires the community to participate in the necessary changes. Um, and also we want to enable UKRI to play a positive and leading role in the national and global transition to a sustainable economy. So it's not just a challenge for us, it's a challenge for the whole society and UKRI has an important role in that. Next slide, please. Okay, so the digital research infrastructure. Uh, UKRI announced a first year investment of 17 million pounds to launch the DRI in June last year. This funds a portfolio of projects to initiate an integrated approach to DRI across um, the research councils and this is really the key step forward a lot of the um, individual activities are continuing on going activities in research councils but the aim here is to have a much more harmonized approach across UKRI the DRI portfolio includes funds for this project among others um, this project is administered by NERC on behalf of UKRI and NERC has awarded the, the funds to our team at CEDA that Poppy introduced. Next slide, please. So the context, first of all, UKRI wants to achieve net zero. This is set out in the sustainability strategy, which sets the 2040 target. Um, the UK has also has net zero targets, and these are uh, set out in a number of documents. The Greening Government Commitments documents set some specific targets that are relevant to this project. Um, the other important piece of context is um, set out, among other places, in the a report by the Royal Society on Digital Technology and the Planet. And this really describes the positive role of digital research infrastructure in helping society to make the uh, transition to sustainability. And it's important for us that we're not only looking at the negative side of big data centers, but also looking at, at what they actually do in a positive sense to help society tackle these the bigger issues. Next slide, please. So to get an idea of um, the scale of the problem, we have that um, CEDA is responsible for a, a data center which supports the uh, atmospheric science community and Earth observation community and, and uh, to an increasing, increasing extent other NERC communities. Uh, this is called Jasmine, and this is responsible for around 400 tonnes of carbon dioxide per year in terms of its electricity bill. Um, the largest, uh, so the, the Archer computer is the, um, the supercomputer of the EPSRC. That's got around 2,000 tonnes per year. Uh, it's actually just now being replaced by Archer 2, which is about three, three times larger. So there's a significant increase, and it's really the, the trend here, which is the concern. At the moment, compared to NERC ships with 35,000 tonnes, or the NERC aircraft with 2,400 tonnes, or ISIS is a particle accelerator at uh, STFC with 
24,000 tons per year. Um, these are, are larger footprints, but what we still need to deal with the digital research infrastructure and and the concern about the the upward trends in its uh, electricity bill and associated footprint. Next slide, please. Okay, um, 2040 or sooner. So if you look at government and international targets for achieving net zero, they have been moving for moving towards us, moving to sooner dates over the last few years. And it's quite possible that uh, that will happen again. Uh, so the targets have been moving consistently in one direction. Uh, the increasingly imminent targets were motivated by extreme events. Um, I've put a few, these are all from, from last year. Quite, quite a dramatic re year really in terms of climate. Uh, 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 and these uh, events are likely to increase in severity and frequency. And uh, so there is a realistic chance that this 2040 target will, will move again. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, um, where does the carbon footprint come from? We, we need to do some more work on this to gather details, but we know quite a lot already. So we'll, from global studies and initial data collection, we see a broadly even split between servers, networks, and user devices. Uh, so servers, I mean the computers in the um, data centers. And network devices includes um, routers and so on in the data centers as well as um, in the outside the data centers. So the footprint of servers and networks is dominated by power consumption in use, um, whereas the user devices, laptops and phones, it is dominated by the supply chain. So the, the manufacturer of uh, most laptops typically uses more energy than, um, than they will consume in use. Uh, so we need to look at all of that. Okay, next slide, please our approach. So the problem is not a purely technical one. There is a, a broad consensus that behavioral change will be needed in order to implement the transition to net zero. Our focus is going to be on evidence where we need to challenge every statement. There's a lot of um, hypothesis and, and also, there's also a danger of people looking at uh, evidence that might be 10 or 15 years old and, and is no longer relevant because things do change quite rapidly in this area, both in terms of the power generation options and in terms of the technology of computers, of course, is, is changing at an incredible rate. Uh, it is important to respect every opinion and every person, even though you're challenging every statement. So I just wanted to make that point. Um, we will be gathering evidence from several sources through proof of concept studies uh, and analyzing existing UKRI digital research infrastructure, a literature survey and uh, community and stakeholder engagement are all included. We are opening, taking an open approach to engage stakeholders across UKRI and, and to gather evidence to address all the concerns that are raised. Okay, next slide, please. Um, we're gonna look at three different views of the footprint to guard against the danger of offshoring carbon emissions or distorting fair composition. So the offshoring there is the, the problem that occurs where you tackle one area of emissions and rather than eliminating the emissions, you simply displace them to another organization or another country. 
which is is not what we want to achieve as a research community. So in terms of reporting, this is the carbon footprint, which will be entered into a national audit. That's very important for government in terms of getting an overall picture of the UK footprint. Um, but it is uh, restricted in terms of what we're directly responsible for. And uh, if we tackle that alone, we will definitely run the risk of displacing emissions into other organizations. So the responsibility view is looking at um, a broader view of what we're responsible for, uh, not only the things we run ourselves and the things we procure and the way we influence other people's behavior. And the value term is where the positive contribution of our role comes in and we look at how UKRI is helping others to uh, make this transition to a carbon negative economy. Next slide, please. What does net zero mean? Um, so basically it means carbon neutral operation and procurement of UKRI owned and majority funded digital research infrastructure. It means a uh, explicit and transparent methodology to avoid risk of offshoring um, by diverting carbon intensive work elsewhere. Due regard to sustainability issues to avoid conflict with broader societal aims. Uh, that's very important in, in many aspects of net zero when you look at the details of how batteries are produced or, or what plans are for carbon offsetting, you very quickly run into potential conflict with sustainability issues. And consideration of what happens outside the machine rooms, both in institutions hosting UK infrastructure and in broader society. Next slide. So there are also some technical questions about what net zero means. For instance, there's a, a very good organization set up called the Climate Neutral Data Center um, Association. Um, and data centers that sign up to this commit to being climate neutral by 2030. The um, their definition of climate neutral is 75% renewable energy supply. Um, and what they call a high bar for circular economy practices that refers to the procurement issue. So they're not being very specific about what is needed in terms of um, a policy towards procuring computers. So there's quite a lot of room within this to have significant um, carbon dioxide emissions, even if they sign up to this network. On the positive side, though, it's important to say that some, possibly many CNDC members are going a lot further than, than this um, membership requirement. So this seems to be a very good organization for encouraging people to communicate and, and get things moving. But we do have to be careful about exactly whether, when people talk about net zero, whether they're really talking about a zero, which is consistent with reducing the climate forcing or getting the climate forcing under control. Next slide, please. How green is our power? So a large part of the footprint comes from power generation. Uh, there's no really correct definition of renewable or carbon neutral energy supply um, because we're buying energy through contracts um, and different forms of contract give different levels of measurable impact on additional renewable gen generation capacity. That is to say, when you sign up a contract, it's not clear whether you're supporting the status quo or whether you're actually contributing towards the transition that needs to happen. 
different organizations are promoting different approaches and um, UKRI needs to choose an approach which matches the aspiration of the sustainability strategy and, and also of the community around UKRI. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, sorry, this one's a little bit too much detail, but it, it just lists some forms of contract or arrangement that you can use for uh, achieving a carbon neutral energy supply. The, the easiest is a green tariff, and every STFC already uses that for its um, laboratories. That's a good start, but um, that does seem to be a broad agreement that it's not uh, enough to, to really drive the transition in the next 20 years. You can go a bit further and get it from a 100% renewable supplier. Uh, you can get supplies which match uh, hourly demand rather than having the demand matched over the whole year and go further into different levels of um, contractual arrangement with the power suppliers. So it's important to understand the pros and cons of all these. And a lot of that is um, quite hard to quantify at the moment. So we, we do have to collect some evidence in terms of what works in these different arrangements. Next slide, please. So in terms of what we mean by evidence for green power choices, um, when we're looking at the different views, these there are slightly different types of evidence that are relevant. So if we're looking at source of evidence for reporting, then it's quite simple. There are reporting requirements. And at the moment, DEFRA and BAYS have slightly different requirements uh, in terms of what they define as green electricity. The, the DEFRA requirements are quite um, permissible, open, uh, and the BAYS requirements are much more restrictive. So there's um, different views there. Um, in terms of responsibility, we can look at the scientific literature and case studies on the impact of different approaches and and try and get a, a range of expert opinion. And, and similarly on the, the value, we can get expert opinion and, and review the scientific literature. Um, I think I'll go on to the next slide. I'll just, um, this is um, the current skeleton timeline for the transition to net zero starting um, soon, I guess, and um, heading up to 2040 or earlier. And uh, we've just split it into three phases. First of all, the quick wins, where there's um, easy steps to take. Um, that might be sort of changing the contract to for a power supply to, to get a tariff which is uh, associated with a lower carbon footprint. The heavy lifting is um, looking at changes to operations that reduce the footprint and changing the way people work. And then the last mile section is, is really going to be getting the last details in place. Um, A lot of the things that uh, we might expect to find in the last mile section are, are to do with areas where it's not clear what to do at the moment and research is needed. So when we're gathering evidence, we're not expecting to find evidence which will tell us the solutions of all the questions. There will be a certain area where we gather evidence and say, somebody else needs to do some more evidence gathering through research or, or additional projects. Okay, next slide, please. 
Uh, geometry of the roadmap. Um, the roadmap needs to be more than a simple timeline. Uh, if you, it's surprising how many roadmaps look like a, a timeline without the features you might expect to find on a, a real roadmap with, with junctions and, and merger of activities. So this is a, an important aspect, um, particularly the decision points. There will be uh, some very important decisions to make between now and 2040. And we need to think not only about what those decisions are, but who might be taking those decisions. Okay, next slide, please. Ethical choices. Um, I put in this because there, there is a question about how to judge the severity of risks of potential future impacts against risks of current cost overrun, or you could say risk of uh, having a ne negative impact on people's research. Uh, one possible approach is to look at um, a center set up by the Medical Research Council or for the Medical Research Council, which is the National Center for the Replacement, Refinement and Reduction of Animals in Research. And um, I think it's interesting if you think about looking at replacement, refinement and reduction of use of fossil fuels or dependency on fossil fuels in research, how we can learn from their experience. So the what we know just by looking at their operation is that their center has established a body of expertise and a focus of activity which can deliver an organize, organizational change across multiple research councils and funded institutions and that looks like a really good example of a, a way of navigating complex decisions in a distributed community over a number of years Next slide, please. Okay, that's the end of my uh, uh, outline of the project. Jen, I'm afraid is not with us today. So we've, I've asked uh, Charlotte to go through these slides. Okay, yes. Charlotte. Yep. I have to have my cursor on the right bit of Zoom in <laughs> order to make a change. Okay, so the objectives are as Martin mentioned, the development of a detailed map of, um, oh no, I thought this was a very map. This is a map of the current UKRI digital research carbon landscape. Um, identifying the technical challenges and opportunities to enable uh, zero carbon UKRI digital research infrastructure. Um, the scoping of a framework and the controls needed to support implementation of an outline net zero roadmap. Um, assessing the implementation of carbon and energy efficiency measures that we already have. Um, the development of an outline roadmap to realize net zero digital research infrastructure and to engage with stakeholders to understand the requirements for future net zero uh, for UKRI owned majority funded re digital research infrastructures. Um, so this is a project timeline, it's quite short. Um, we are in the green bit, January 22, we're having these initial meetings um, and we hope soon to have our first Sandpit event in February and to be running various workshops as well, uh, with a view to then beginning proof of concept studies in the summer of this year and uh, drafting our reviews to uh, and our reporting um, in uh, March 2023. Um, Martin, did you want to say anything about an extension to the project at this point? Um, we're 
talking to NERC about having a three month extension so that the report writing could take place uh, April, May and June of 2023 and give us a little bit more time to get organized and, and perhaps delay the sandpit event and, and other things on this timeline by, by a few months because um, the start of our project was delayed and, and it is been quite, it's taking some time to, to get in contact with people across the UKRI community and, and make sure that we've got enough engagement in the project before we go into the sandpit. Okay, um, we do have some milestones. Uh, we have a quarterly meeting with our steering committee, um, internal reports and documentation, um, including this uh, database of the UKRI digital research infrastructure carbon landscape and an uh, internal report on the uh, technical challenges and opportunities and for our proof of concept studies. Um, there's an engagement workshop on how we the implementation plan and some external reporting as well. And I think some of these external reportings may not shift with our timeline. So there is a need to have some outputs from the project in spite of any um, timeline offsets. Um, oh yes, and dissemination of materials. Okay, the budget. So the core team at STFC and CEDA is uh, 390,000 uh, pounds. For the consortium, there's 760,000. For um, workshops, we've 210,000 pounds and the proof of concept studies of uh, 500,000 um, pounds to be allocated via these uh, sandpit events. Oh, and I'm next. <laughs> um, so this, my slides are about how, how you can get involved with uh, this Net Zero project. Um, so we've kind of formed the consortium now um, but other ways you can become involved are by coming to our workshops, um, by being involved with our proof of concept studies, um, for which the sandpit events will be an important part of um, informing those. And also today in these breakout discussions. Um, so consortium building, the consortium includes representatives from all across UKRI um, with people with knowledge of digital research infrastructures. And the role is to um, advise and to contribute to the Net Zero project in terms of what are the requirements for the digital research infrastructure database, um, how we select proof of concept studies, uh, feedback and for the planning and the running of these of workshops um, uh, the analysis of uh, the funding framework and a system level view. Um, and the consortium members will be funded as part of the net zero contract. Um, so we have a number of workshops um, which are there to elicit expert opinion. Um, and we're looking for institutions to host these workshops. And we're looking for a cross section of opinion with maybe some international perspectives and also intergenerational perspectives to deliver recommendations for the net zero roadmap with evidence that's citable opinions and analysis. Uh, so what are our workshops? We've got one on machine room and hardware, looking at the construction of machine rooms and embedded carbon, uh, their operation, and the hardware in terms of their power usage effectiveness and their carbon footprint. Um, the consolidation of services, essentially cloud consolidation, um, how we can enhance efficiency through those methods and how we can 
we need to consider also the evolution of those services in the next 20 years. And to optimize this thing called the utilization factor, in other words, um, uh, making sure that the machines aren't idle. Um, effective computation, making each computation count, oops, reducing the uh, resource evaporation factor, in other words, making sure that the resources that we use have some kind of impact they're seen by other people. It's not just data that's sitting, waiting to be analyzed, but is actually having something done with it. Um, I guess all of this is really to do with the idea that computation is not, is a finite resource. So um, making the best use of that is not, no longer an ever expanding um, uh, resource. Um, the efficient management of data. So in terms of fair data principles, making data findable and accessible and interoperable and reusable. Um, options for carbon capture for, um, data, for carbon that we are unable to um, mitigate against. Unavoided, I think is the word that Martin used. Um, and what we can do in terms of establishing standards. Um, there's a workshop on the plus side of our carbon accounts, how um, our infrastructures are contributing to society, societal's aims as well, of uh, people reducing their own carbon footprints by you know, holding meetings like this, for example. Um, looking at what holds us back, um, what barriers are there to adopting them, um, carbon efficient choices. Okay, so the proof of concept project. Um, so you're invited to bid for our funds. We're expecting to distribute our 500,000 pounds to about five projects. Um, these are to look at the implementation of current carbon and energy efficient measures looking at existing things. So this time frame is very short, so we're expecting these to really be about an analysis of existing um, measures, but also looking at um, what additional measures might be possible and uh, collaborating with the existing uh, funded activities. Um, these will produce reports uh, to look at the relevance of these proof of concept studies to the UKRI overall roadmap towards net zero and to provide evidence to inform future investment. Okay, the Sandpit event, which we initially thought would be in February, it might now be later. Um, it's a two day uh, interactive strategic workshop. Um, coordinated by the steering committee and the net zero consortium. Uh, we'll be discussing the allocation of funds for um, the proof of concept studies and also the workshops. Um, the outcome of the sandpit will be to choose the proof of concept studies that get funded and also to come with ideas. So you can apply to take part in that sandpit uh, I think there'll be some information about that later. Um, proposing ideas um, to be discussed. And also we intend to um, consider equality and diversity and inclusion so that we get a diverse uh, range of opinion and um, uh, experience in those events. Do you have any questions?